Welcome back, friends. Today, I didn't have to leave my house because my guest drove all the way from Minnesota to hang out with me for her first ever podcast interview. She has way more followers on the internet than me because she's way more charismatic than me, so maybe I'll be able to learn something from her. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Emily Caribou. Thank you for having me. Oh my God, where'd you drive from? Um, well, we drove from Delano, which is west of the Twin Cities. So it just, it, okay, my navigation said two hours and two minutes. So not bad. I even hit Starbucks on the way. Yeah. Well, Got when fueled I, up. When I texted you to say, like, are we still on for noon? And the fact that you said noon on the dot, I was like, wow, yeah. you are so on time. I know, which is really kind of crazy for me. Well, technically, I was five minutes late, but... No, well, you you got slightly lost coming into Eau Claire. I got, I got lost. It's okay. So how come you've never been to Eau Claire before? I, I don't know. It's an incredible city. Have you never heard of this place before? No, I've heard of it. I just have never come here. I don't. I don't know why. That's a that's a very good question. It is the new happening spot in Wisconsin. Really? Mm-hmm. We have people come from Minneapolis all the time for the weekend getaways here now. Well, I need to check out the weekend getaways. I mm-hmm. guess we were in Time Magazine as like top hundred best cities to live, like not crazy long ago. And then, do you know who Bon Iver is? No. Well, he, he has an album <laughs> with Taylor Swift, so he's like a bit. Well, anyways, yeah, has an album with Taylor Swift. He's like a mega celebrity. You've yeah, heard yeah. his music before. It's it's spelled B O N space I B E R. Okay. Anyways, when he won his Grammy. He shouted out Eau Claire because he lives here. Oh, yeah. Um, and then the whole music and art scene over the last like 15 years has just exploded. Now we have the biggest sculpture tour in the country. They're like all over our city. Okay, we have that's... a ridiculous amount of murals, which I got to contribute to. Amazing. So, yeah. Eau Claire is a, a dope little town. Where are you? Where are you from? though? Okay. So I grew up and still live in Delano. So small town west of the Twin Cities. How far west of the Twin Cities? Like 45 minutes from Minneapolis, a half an hour from like Minnetonka, you know, like the hub of where malls are. Sure. So you just take 94 straight through Minneapolis then, or do you take 694? No, no, no. It's like a 94 thing. You just keep going west and you'll eventually hit it. Yeah. So it's cute. Did you grow up there or when did you move there? No, I grew up there. I grew up there. And um, when I met my husband after high school, I brought him out to meet my parents. And he's like, dude, you live on a gravel road? And I'm like, yeah, because that's what it is out there. Yeah, yeah, totally. And so he fell in love with country living. And that's where we decided to raise a family. Yeah, well, it makes sense with your Instagram handle and everything is under small town me. Yeah, because you're from such a small town. What's population out there? I don't know. What is it? Like 7,000 people? No, it's got to be more than that. I have no idea. Sure. How far? I probably should pay attention. (laughs) Our our population until recently was sixty nine thousand four hundred and twenty one. Oh yeah, no, I mean ours is got to be less than ten thousand. I sure. don't know what it is. How far from the center of town were you? You grew up on like an actual farm farm. How many no. acres? Like what was the situation? I never did. We just oh, lived. Okay. We just lived in a house. Oh okay, cool. So it's just a small town. Um, we I remember growing up. I mean, we would drive twenty minutes to the nearest fast food restaurant, which was Burger oh. King. We had a Dairy Queen in town, so we oh, would cool. go there. Um, and like little like drive the peppermint twist is the drive-in in town which is actually really really well known it's kind of a dive but it oh, is cool. the best food and the best shakes yeah and people don't know what a gem it is until they actually go there that's where i worked in high school sure so how come you decided to stay there besides the fact like the weather's awesome during the summer in and minnesota like, yeah i mean i i love the midwest outside of the snow i think everything else here is perfect but why do you decide to stay i mean I guess I never thought about living anywhere else. It Mm. never even dawned on me to move somewhere else. I just, this is just where I've always done things and my friends are and my family is. And so I was like, well, just gonna live here. Yeah, do you travel a lot (laughs) or not really? Not really. Um, I mean, we we do our fair amount of traveling, but we're not like Mm. travelers. Sure. So. Have you ever left the country? Yeah. Where'd I've, you go? I mean, I've gone over to Europe. Um, I I was able to do that with my sister right after college, and we spent three and a half weeks on a little tour, sure. kind of tooting around and and seeing everything. Um, of course, I've been you know to Mexico and all the islands down in the Caribbean, and um, I just went to Canada with my mom and my sister on a little girls trip. Ooh, I've I actually know. never been to Canada. Oh, it was so fun, Montreal. I yeah. loved Montreal so much. I actually I told my husband, I'm like, dude, I would live in Montreal. Sure. Like, I don't care that it's cold. Yeah. It was so fun. Yeah. So. So what does the house situation look like? Well, okay, let's just, for everybody to find out more about it. Small Town Me, you can go look it up. Um, she is the very Midwest accent <laughs> creator. I don't have and, an accent. And, yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> for, for people who haven't seen your page, how would you describe what you do? Oh my gosh. You know, it's a little bit of everything. I'll talk fashion, um, a lot of garage selling, a lot of crafting, upcycling. Um, I talk, you know, I do things with my kids every so often, so a little bit of family life. 
chickens accidentally made a cameo one day and now they're here to stay so i don't know it's just a little bit of everything <laughs> yeah cool cool yeah i mean it's it's a different uh time and age right where you don't have to be on tv because everybody's uh instagram or their their social media pages yeah. are their own tv channels Isn't that so funny and people tune in and yours is like their what not hgtv but like a mixture of that and home living <laughs> it's like a weird people call me martha stewart like the yeah, modern day yeah, martha stewart that. and i'm like yeah. dude i'll take that that is sure. a huge compliment so but, let's let's talk about your internet origin story when did you start getting into oh. this stuff because uh yeah tiktok wasn't around forever and that was tiktok what you originally kind of came well in? so what happened was I, i'm a mom of three boys and when they first started getting cell phones, they're like, I want to be on Facebook. And I'm like, what the heck is Facebook? I've never done MySpace. I never did Facebook nothing. So I had to create an account. And then they're like, we want to do Instagram. So I got an Instagram account so I could kind of creep on them in a, a mom <laughs> on a mom level. Um, and I'm like, what is this world of girls like taking pictures of themselves in outfits? And this is like a job. I have a marketing degree from St. Thomas. Oh, so my cool. brain is very like driven in that way. Um, I started taking pictures of myself in outfits and posting them. And I'm like, this is really weird. And I, I'm over 40 and not a model. And that didn't take me very far, right? Sure. And so when my husband was like, dude, have you been on TikTok? I'm like, what the heck is TikTok, you know? Yeah. And so I got the app and it's video driven. And I'm like, oh, this makes more sense to me because I never shut up, right? Like I have a lot to say. <laughs> sure. And so I started kind of playing around with TikTok and one day I had bought this Prada purse that I specifically purchased for garage selling. It made sense. It's crossbody. I'm hands free. It had a little pocket. I could put my quarters in it. I'm like, this is like the perfect purse for garage selling because garage selling is like the thing that I like to do. Yeah. And um, I unboxed it. And a lot of the times when I was watching unboxings, these girls, it was perfectly set up, beautiful outfits, music. And I literally sat on my bedroom floor in workout clothes and I talked the whole time and yeah. unboxed this product person why I bought it. And the video like did really, really well. And I didn't even realize it for, you know, until a couple days later. Oh, sure. And then things just kind of started escalating from there. Doing really well as in like approximately how many views over those few days? Um, I, I was garage sailing with my friend Laco and she goes, Emily, look at your TikTok. I'm like, what are you talking about? And it got like 160,000 views. And I'm like, oh, cool. what in the yeah, world? Sure. It just happened, right? And so then I started reading comments and people were like asking different questions. And so I was like, I'm going to do like a house tour just on the outside of my house. Yeah. And so I just walked around. I, I was getting ready. I was hosting a lacrosse. Was it lacrosse or some sort of a sports party? I don't even remember what my kid was in. Was it at lacrosse at the time? Anyway, the team was coming over for like a pool party. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh, I'll just do like this little house tour and walk around my house. Like three million views. And I'm like, what in the world? And my followers just kept, and it was like everything that I posted, whether it was garage sailing or chickens, I put my chickens on a swing and that. Yeah, just, I saw that video. <laughs> yeah. It's just been, it's, it's been so much fun. How long ago was that? So much that? fun. Um, three years ago, maybe. I, oh, I okay. probably should know. I don't. Okay, I guess I. So I have a question for you. Yeah. I think um, you said to me before that you were a stay-at-home mom. For, yeah. for a very long time, I could see the appeal of wanting to like focus on family full time. But I guess I've never really asked anybody. Don't did you ever feel like a loss of identity of like sense of self, not having your own career or anything like that? I think I stayed so busy that I never fully lost that oh, sure. so my kids went to a small school and i was always very involved so whether it was school advisory committee i was on that for like 13 years oh, cool. um i asked if i could have a bulletin board where i could you know do it every single month to promote the school and yeah. i was given permission so then i would craft all that up and cool. and do that i was super involved in like the school's marathon and helping with that i would i asked if i could create a yearbook for the school. So mm. I was the sole yearbook committee for like four years. <laughs> I mean, I just always found stuff to do. Yeah, You know, sure. even the Peppermint Twist in Town, I remember her um, bringing these big cutout bears to my house and I would paint them and put faces on them for her to put up as like road signs. Sure. So I just, I guess if you, you know, give yourself the availability, let people know that you're available, opportunities will come. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool that you got to be that involved because like I get the emails from my my kids' school all the yeah. time looking for volunteers, and it's just a matter of like I'm not available sure. the vast majority of the time. I would love to be, yeah. you know, like I know they had an artist there not long ago painting a mural, and I would love to do that. Yeah. I just don't really have 
much time to do like unpaid work if it was possible for me to do it like that would be so cool you know what i mean i got to go to like one parent's day with my kids and they were so excited to show me off and it was like oh man i want to be there that would be awesome and i i mean i totally get that and i feel i feel so fortunate and so lucky to be put in the situation where i was able to do all those things and not have to worry about if i was getting paid or not yeah just putting in the time it's cool that you didn't have to then make money necessarily either from like all the social media stuff yeah like obviously like everyone wants to get paid for work that they do especially if you're like working with a brand or whatever and like that that's its own side of it but the fact that you didn't have the pressure on you like for me as an example i'm finally closing my store which is like a bummer but like i'm ready to move on kind of a thing when i opened my skate shop i was 23 and i only had one kid she was one year old so what time of day i went to work was irrelevant yeah you know but once my kids were in school it was like well i don't want to be at my shop when school's out because I want to be with my kids because yeah. I don't see them all day. You know what I mean? But the only time that my shop was busy is when school was out. Yeah. So then I was there less and less. And so it eventually just got to a point where it was like, I, I got, I just got to call it. But there's that, that stress and that pressure of like, I do make money off the show. Thanks. Yeah. Quick trip. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do like make money off the things I do yeah. and artwork and things like that. Um, but I have to make money doing it. Yeah. And so there, there's a lot of strategy that has to go into everything. So if anyone's ever like, oh, why'd you do that with the show? Why'd you do there? Believe me, there's a strategy. There there's is. a reason, you know, I did it. Th- I do things the way that I do it. But for you to not have to do that, I feel like that's very freeing to be able to just create just for it the sake is. of creating. But I'm also a very competitive person. I always right. have been. And it's more competitive with myself. You yeah, know what I mean? Sure. And so when I first started sharing content and creating content, I started noticing things like other creators had sponsored yeah. about their posts. Or, you know, I, I could see that brands were reaching out and promoting through different creators. So then that was my goal. I'm sure. like, dude, I want to get big enough so that I can, you know, promote something. And I still remember some of the first brands that reached out to me, like one was self tanner and I was overjoyed, you know, and I don't know yeah. how to use self tanner. I mean, I know that I'm in Minnesota and I should know how to use it, but sure. I am not schooled with the self tanner situation. So I remember doing this whole video, you know, and like putting the stuff on and I felt so cool to hit that sponsored button. Yeah. And then I was like, Oh, you know, that was it. Like, yeah. It was still very, very cool, but I've just kind of learned that um, sharing what I want and what, what my passions are, that's what really drives me and yeah. my creativity. Yeah. Well, and it's about finding brands that align with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Quick Trip, as an example, is really good about they don't tell anyone what to do. Yeah. Like I know a lot of the people that are on the Quick Trip team and like they and they're just smart knowing that like well if we tell you what to post or how to do it then it's just an ad versus if we let you create something that is along the lines of what you like to make anyways you're gonna like doing it and everyone that sees it's gonna like it better and it's gonna perform better anyway no you're absolutely by the way tangent quick chip has the best donuts yeah i am so addicted to their donuts to the point where sometimes i try to pay at the pump (laughs) <laughs> because I know if I go inside, the box is coming home with me. <laughs> the glazers. I know. Yes. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. So and now good. those chips that are like everybody's been asking me if they're actually good, and yeah. they're actually good. Really? Did you, you didn't have any of those? No. Did they I not need- send them to you? I'm not sponsored by Quick Trip. Oh, it's time to get. But sponsored I go by there Quick all Trip. the time. Quick Trip. I love your donuts. What kind of music did you grow up listening to? Oh my gosh. 101.3 KDWB. I never had like MTV or you know anything like that. Yeah, and sure. so I don't I don't know a lot of artists because sure. back then it was like a dial on yeah. the radio. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and like yeah. now it'll tell you like this is the person singing. This is the name of the song. Here's the album cover. Like yeah. that's I I was a child of the 80s. I listen to a ton of music because I paint. So, yeah. but, but I'll just put like Spotify playlist suggested. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know the names of anything or lyrics to anything, Yeah. but I listen to music like all day long. So I'm always trying to find new music. Do you hear about reverb music festival yet? No. Okay. Well, <laughs> just because you picked Blink-182, they're not coming for it, but it's, it's similar. Okay. So it's a new music festival in Eau Claire. Yeah. Um, last year was the first year they did it and I made their uh, mascot for them, which is like, Oh, this. cool. Yeah. I got hired to like do their... Okay. Yeah, so I painted this him. This is this is so cool. Thank you. Yeah, so I painted him like eight feet tall for the festival, so people could like pose with him and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they're doing it again this year, August sixteenth and seventeenth, and they're gonna have Yellow Card there. That's like the headliner of yeah. uh, the one day, um, and then a bunch of emo bands, and then on the other day, it's like a bunch of rappers I grew up on. So it's like 
Mike Jones, Young Jock, Twista, T.I., like a whole bunch of people. But yeah. they're coming to Eau Claire. Like I said, Eau Claire is becoming a, uh, a bigger and bigger music town. Which oh, has that is cool. Been really rad. So let's talk about some of the other like brands that hit you up and what you got to create for them. Because it's kind of exciting, but at the same time, you don't want it to be something that like dictates how you create. Yeah. And I'm sure sometimes you've had people reach out where you're like, that doesn't really fit. But yeah. other than the tanning one, what's been one that you got to create that was my, actually really fun? One of my really early ones, um, and this, this made me feel so cool, was Jordache Jeans. Cool. And I'm like what what do you want me to do and they're like well this is this is the ad that we're going to be running they sent me the ad with brooke shields and i'm like shut up i just saw this before everybody else like how cool am i right yeah. and so i'm looking at brooke shields and she's gorgeous and she's putting on her jeans in this super like sexy way and i'm like not that kind of a person and sure. so i literally put on the jordas jeans went put on my furry boots went out in the snow and grabbed a chicken and that was my ad and they loved it. <laughs> yeah. But I'm like that, you know, it's just really cool and brands just kind of let you take it and make yeah. it your own. And I've been so fortunate. Some of the brands that I work with, like Wiley Walby with their licorice and um, I've done a whole lot of stuff with JCPenney, which is really fun because they just let me talk about all of the ways that I use JCPenney in my own home. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just been a little bit of everything. Sure. So why, why do you think that social media has been working so well for you? Oh my gosh, I, I think it's because I am the same person I am from before I started. I never changed. I never tried to be anybody different. I I am just my raw Emily self. Sure. You know what I mean? And I talk about all the things that I love. And yeah, some of it is unboxing a Prada purse, but I also go to garage sales. And I am told that I go a little bit extra when it comes to gift wrapping. And yeah. I just put myself out. I came out of the closet and told everybody that I was a scrapbooker. I mean, that was hard <laughs> for me. I was like, dude, I am gonna lose viewers and followers for sure with this one. And then lo and behold, people were like, show us more. And I'm like, this is so cool. Like yeah. I found this community of people that are like me and yeah. that like the same things as me. Yeah, I mean, I think that's honestly though, like I, I use this term all the time, cool guying people. I hate when people cool guy me, when they act like they're too cool to talk to me. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? It's yeah. like people who wear sunglasses when they're inside. Yeah. I'm like, dude, get like, <laughs> you don't look that cool. Like, knock it off, you know? But that's the thing yeah. with models and everything else, too. Not saying they're all like that. But I think that's why Instagram and social, in general on social media, yeah. you're having so many people come up that aren't like that. Because you're actually relatable. Because you're just a regular person who's just nice. You know what I mean? We are and people want to support people. that. Totally. But not I everybody, don't... like, actually shows that no i know you know what i mean <laughs> no i do know what you mean i yeah. do know what you mean and yeah. i think it's so important for people to understand that we're all here together we're all trying to figure out life together and we're all real people yeah so nobody's nobody's better than the next uh, totally when did you start becoming like very aware that anything you do was going to be criticized and watched because it's hard to be fully <laughs> yourself when you know that like well this is going to be seen by you know what i mean yeah um I don't know if I want to share it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's been, it's been, for me, it's been kind of a thing of what I do on the internet is very opinion based. It is you know very I mean? opinion based and it's taken out of context. Yeah, a lot. And I talk a lot. So like kind of no matter if you agree with 99% of what I say, yeah, everybody's going to find things about what I say or about what my guests say that they're like, nah, not for me. So I end up like realizing I'm being, or I think I blow it up in my mind more than anything that yeah. like everything I say is going to be criticized to a certain degree. I find that really stressful and I'm like still trying to get past it where it's like a, eh, whatever. If people don't like it, they don't like yeah. it. But I feel like you have to be like that, right? It's like I you just, have to be unapologetically yourself. It's more than I'm aware also. Mm. Um, but the thing that really has surprised me is how people pick things out of videos that I don't even see. Oh, sure. So like, like I'll just be, I don't even know, garage selling and they'll be like, where'd you get your denim shorts? And I'm like, really? I wasn't even showing my outfit, but you picked up on that. Or sure. just the littlest things, like some knickknack or bowl that I maybe have in my kitchen or I don't know. Where do you get your ideas for all the crafts? Are they really just straight from your head or are you my picking them from brain, Pinterest? Or? My brain is a crazy, crazy place. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> they just pop in there. So like I had this video go crazy viral. It's gotten like... I'm not even exaggerating, millions of views on every platform. And it was making, somebody asked me if I could show how to wrap a wine bottle for a teacher gift. 
Oh, I love that. And I just I, watched it. I made it. Yeah, pencil. The pencil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally made it up on camera as I went along. In my head, I, I was in my mudroom and I was like, oh my gosh, I just need a pair of yellow tights and I can pull this off. Yeah. So I, the whole video before I edited it down was, I remember 17 minutes. Oh, and sure. I got done making it and I looked at it and I'm like, dude, this is going to go viral. I can tell. But that's how my ideas come. They just come to me out of nowhere. Sure. Do you keep like a long list of them at this point? So that way you just like Nothing's pick documented. what to do? Nothing's documented. I probably should have done that. I'm. So you're the first person <laughs> I've talked to that doesn't. <laughs> really? Because, well, because people want to have consistency, right? Like through posting. Once you're like getting competitive with that stuff, you know that you have to be consistent to a certain degree. And you don't want that pressure of I have to come up with an idea today. Or I'm going to lose my streak of however many days. You know what I mean? You know what the funny thing is with consistency? Yeah. I was feeling very burnt out last summer. Sure. I think my account grew and it grew faster than I was ready to grow. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I just, I felt burnt out. I felt uncreative. And um, one of my friends was like, Emily, we need to just start structuring you. Let's do gift wrapping on these days, farm content on this day, fashion on this day. And I'm like, perfect. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, it's almost like it got worse. Yeah. I need the chaos. Sure. I need to just be able to wake up and be like, I'm going to post me tap dancing today. And sometimes I do that. Or, sure. you know, like I just bought a jump rope and I'm so excited to learn how to jump rope. I'll probably post that tomorrow. I mean, I don't know. Sure. I think, I mean, the <laughs> fact that your brain continues to give you ideas is impressive though. Because again, like you're aware that a lot of people are going to see it. So there's that yeah. like pressure of like, this needs to be successful when you make something, you know what I mean? Yeah. And to have to like come up with it on the spot. I struggle with that a lot. Like I had a video of me interviewing my dog go viral, which was like really random and not anything I meant to. It was just, yeah. oh, that would be funny. Like I'll do that. Yeah. But then I had all these people asking me for more dog videos. I know. And that's when and you I'm shut like, down. I don't, yeah. I'm like, I don't know what else to ask my dog. And don't worry guys, <laughs> there's more dog videos on the way. I swear to God, they're coming. But like I, then I felt the pressure of I got to yep. be able to put at least one dog video a week. But I was like blanking on ideas. 100% happened to me with my chickens. Oh, sure. Because, yeah, does. let's talk about the chicken video. That had, well, I don't even know how many millions. The chicken swing? Yeah. I don't even know. Isn't that so random? Yeah. Random. I don't, and the chickens, I didn't grow up on a farm. Sure. I never had chickens. We literally bought our house, and my husband, like, I had a dog house in, in the yard, and I'm like, Jeff, I'm totally going to make this into a chicken house, and I'm going to get chickens. This is way before social media. Oh, sure. You know, or yeah. that, I, that I had social how media. How many years ago were we talking about? Oh, let's see. So Brady is in eighth grade and we bought the house when he was right around kindergarten age. So nine, 10 years ago. Sure. Something like that. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to build this out to a chicken house. And I did. And I got chickens and I don't know, they just went on my online one day because this is something random that I had in my head. Yeah. Sure. And then a creator, um, Andrea Nelson Art is her handle and she sent me this chicknick table. <laughs> So then that one did really, really good. Okay, what's a chicknick table? It's, it's a picnic table for chickens. Like just a little one? Yeah, isn't that weird? And there was like a like a fancy thing in the middle. So like instead of a tabletop, it's almost like a, it looks like a strainer for like fruit or something. Yeah, sure. So you can stick stuff in there. Like I did frozen watermelon because I was yeah. like, well, I got to make this extra because it's social media. So I made sure. this whole frozen water tower situation yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and put it on there. But yeah, chicknick table. And then I had him carve pumpkins. And a lot of these ideas come from my followers. The they send me videos. Part? Yes, have you seen this? No. Okay, you take a pumpkin yeah. and you take, well, I called it a vegetable peeler. I don't know, I, I was corrected online. But you kind of make little indents in the skin of the, of the pumpkin where you want your chickens to carve. Oh. And if you do that, if you remove like that outer like the hard skin, skin whatever, so yeah. it shows like the flesh of the pumpkin, yeah. they'll start pecking. <laughs> and they literally carved the pumpkins. And I don't know if it was by the grace of God, but my little silky, Josie Geller, she carved this thing and it had fangs. So then people were obsessed and they're like, we need to see these chicken. And I'm like, this was coincidence, but so funny. Oh my God. That's It's awesome. really cute. It's a really yeah. fun. You should try it. I, well, I don't have chickens, but oh, I, I'll okay. try. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I said, I need, I need more dog video ideas. So how do your kids uh, deal with their mom being a social media celebrity? Do they I mean, love it? Do they hate it? Do they want to be in videos with you? Literally all three. And all of them all the time? Yes. So <laughs> no, I mean all three. So like my, my oldest one, um, Jordan is his name. I call him Borden all the time. He he could care less if he was in a video or not. He thinks it's really fun. And he does yeah. his own videos. And oh, his sure. own, he's been on the news before he... Um, He's a mechanic. So he he found this, you know those grocery carts that got Walmart yeah, places? Yeah, sure. He found one on the side of the road. Okay. And he rebuilt it so it goes like 50. And so he... <laughs> 
drives it down like the road, right? Okay. And somebody's dash cam caught it on fa- on camera, put it on social media. The news picked up on it, and then they interviewed him. How, this, how did it drop? Like, dude, I don't know. Was Jordan it one of the is, ones that people like the handicapped people sit with yes. the little thing, like one of those? Yes. Oh. So he wild. took the motor out and redid the wi- redid the tires. And Jordan is my creative brain. Like sure. he, that is him to a T. Do you so, guys have meetings like once a week where you bounce ideas off no, each other for should. socials? No, but we That's a really good idea. <laughs> like that's <laughs> that's part of dinner time, a five minute window of yeah. who, who has ideas for each other. We got to brainstorm. I mean, yeah. Need an idea idea table. And then my youngest Brady, he's the one that's on a lot of my a lot of my um, social media, and he has a lot of fun with it. Sure. My middle one, he does his middle kid thing. He's my skateboarder. Yeah. He's just, yeah. What are He's your off. What are your goals with the social media? Obviously, like you always want to be growing numbers, but do you have certain goals in your mind of what I you mean, want to try to get to? When you first start like blowing up, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, you're like, oh, I want a million followers. Now it's just that I am so grateful for the community I have and the people that follow me. And I don't know. I mean, I would love it to turn into something. I've always dreamed of having like a show. Sure. I think that would be so much fun, like some yeah. sort of a show where I can just inspire people and give them ideas because being able to inspire people, that's yeah. huge. Yeah, You know what I mean? It gives me so much joy when people watch my videos and then they send me their own videos or they tag me or they send me pictures of what they created mm-hmm. off of what I showed them. Sure. I'm like, what? that is the biggest compliment ever. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I think inspiring people in that kind of way to find little bits of joy in their everyday lives is pretty cool. Yeah. Because yeah. like the the making the pencil out of a, a wine bottle, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's not really super productive. It's not like crazy impressive from an art standpoint. It's just like a, how can I make this otherwise menial task fun? Fun you know what I mean? and, and bring cute. fun into your life. Yeah, yeah. And when people, when people create or even when they gift wrap anything like, um, for the holidays, I showed the Tootsie Roll method, how to wrap things in the Tootsie Roll method. My mom taught me and my sister this you years ago. You just cut ago, it long, right? And then you use cellophane. Did you know that no. if you wrap something that's rounded or odd shaped, and you take your gift wrap and you line it with cellophane, your gift wrap won't rip? Really? It's it's a phenomenon of gift wrapping. So then <laughs> you like can roll it and oh. tape it, and then when you cinch the sides with ribbon, mm-hmm. it it won't rip. Sure. It's amazing. Yeah. But anyway, tons of people were doing that. And then it was yeah. giving them joy to wrap their gifts and give it to somebody else and see the joy that the person was, you know, given. Yeah, sure. Anyway. Yeah. No, I, I think that's it's awesome. It's like a domino effect of joy. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and I mean, at this point, you're already doing the things you want to do. Like one mm-hmm. question that I ask people all the time is if you didn't need to make money, how would you spend your time? And it sounds like you'd spend your time pretty much doing the same thing. I do the same thing I've always done. <laughs> Isn't that so weird? But no, like that's I because I really like money people I feel like have a weird relationship with money. It's it's for its own reasons of like goals, it's nice to have something measurable mm-hmm. of like, oh, I made more money doing this thing this year so you can yeah. see progress in that kind of way. But money is just a tool. Like nobody really wants money. That's yeah. that's that's they want whatever money can get them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which could be status, which could be whatever or it could be this car, but they don't actually care about money. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so if you already like are making what you need to, where you can live the lifestyle that you want and do the things you want, then yeah. it's like you won the lottery because you already have everything. Like what else it's do you need? It's a great way though to get you from point A to point B. Yeah. Do you sure. know what I mean? So like for, for, for me, one of the things on my social media is I would watch other creators and they were, they were always doing these giveaways. Mm. And it, sometimes it was money. Sometimes it was um, teach your wish list or holiday, whatever it happens to be. And I'm like, oh, to be able to do that someday, that's what I want to do. I've been able to do that. Yeah, I saw you post a teacher giveaway the other day. So I said, Yeah, so every there. Friday, every Friday until the end of the summer, I'm doing clearing a teacher wish list up to five hundred dollars. Oh cool. and that is possible because of what I do, being a creator. Sure. So I'm just taking the money and rolling it back in and helping everybody who's gotten me to where I am. Who's helping fund that? Me. Like, just you? <laughs> just me. Wow. I mean, honestly, like... I'm not, it's not sponsored. It's just me. It's something that I do, but I'm able to do that because of right. my platform. How but cool I is bet that? There, I bet there would be brands that would jump in on that. Oh, like, I if w- you asked them and just said, like, this is what I'm doing, that would then give a grand or whatever. That would, you know what I mean? That would be amazing. I rarely ask brands for anything. Um, I've put together some gift baskets for, like, different silent auctions and things like that. So I'll reach out to brands and I'll say, hey, um, like whoever it happens to be, can you maybe donate 
some some sort yeah. of a gift basket that I, I will wrap it online yeah. and tag you sure. and say that you're you know you did this or whatever but then give it to the silent auction and yeah. brands will do that for me but i i don't I, know i just think there's so many smart ways to work with advertising where it's not a bad thing like oh people, absolutely you know what i mean people a lot of times will be like oh well if you're just donating this is one thing like i've had people say you should never like tell people when you donate to something and i just totally disagree with that because it's not about like getting the appreciation from people of like oh i'm such a good person i donated it's not yeah. about that but the other effect the the important one is when you donate it inspires other people to donate i agree with you that. know what i mean yeah. so by using your platform in that way and then same with the brand if a brand wants to give you a thousand dollars they get then like the shout out and the advertisement out of it yeah but it doesn't make it selfish it just opens up the doors for even yeah. more you're able to do more good because of it and that's what like with a lot of creators if they have to do sponsored content for one everyone needs to get paid but by doing that type of stuff it allows them the freedom to create so much more yeah. you know what i mean like i was talking to ed the diver who i was just telling you about you stayed here last night yeah ed the diver what's up bro he's so awesome <laughs> um but he'll get like you know people online telling him like well you should do this for free you should do this for free it's like well but if he did all that for free he wouldn't be able to travel full-time cleaning up all the waterways yep he's only able to do that because he also makes money doing it yeah so there's like a certain line that you have to decide like how what am i willing to do where i can accept money for it and feel good about it yeah. and there isn't like a everything's a spectrum there isn't like a really obvious line where that is that mm -hmm. line kind of depends for every single person yeah. you know what i mean yeah. whether you respect the brand or you don't there's always going to be stuff that's just i won't represent this brand you know what I mean? Yep. Or, or things like that. But uh, there's a lot of creative ways to work with brands where it's advertising, but it's still accomplishing a bigger goal that you want to achieve. Yeah. Yeah. I know you give gifts all the time. Can I give you a gift? Yeah. Cool. Do you like chocolate? <laughs> oh my gosh. I love chocolate. Have you ever had Mayana chocolate? No. It's the best chocolate in the country. Okay. I swear to God, it is actually the best chocolate. They market themselves that way, but it is the best chocolate I've ever yeah, had. Yeah. They're from Spooner, Wisconsin. Oh, I think I've heard of Spooner. Yeah, it's and it's a tiny town. I don't even yeah, know. Yeah. Probably less than 5,000 people. Yeah. That's where the factory amazing. is. Amazing. Yeah, so I got one right here. Oh my gosh, amazing. This is the Fix Bar. Um, vanilla shortbread, uh, caramel, and dark chocolate. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, you can find those. <sighs> MayanaChocolate.com. Use promo code PASSION for 25% off. But in general, like it really is the best chocolate I've ever had. And they make all kinds of different stuff. They actually do these... Um, uh orange peels and lemon peels oh yeah where yeah, it's yeah. like the little bit of the peel that's wrapped in the chocolate or yeah. whatever it's yeah it's incredible let's oh talk about gosh. your gifts though you give gifts all the time so i mean i do yeah. I, mean, I think i'm a gift giver by nature well just the fact that what you do kind of allows it so tell yeah. me a little bit more about it. you did some christmas stuff and then I like did. what are some of the ones that you want to do i mean doing doing the wish list for christmas what i did was i had people just leave a comment what what is something you want for christmas and it was everything from the pink glue gun that i use in a lot of my videos to <laughs> pots and pans to maybe the smiley face slippers that i'm always wearing at mm -hmm. home and what i just randomly picked people and i sent it to them i sent them the gift and it was awesome because it was kind of like a sprinkling of joy yeah sure and even the teacher wish list that I'm doing now, it's really, really cool because when you're giving like that, it makes the person who gets it feel good. It makes the person who gives it feel good. And then the people watching it, they feel good and they start following suit. Yeah. And it's just a really neat. Yeah, it's inspiring people in a cool way. Yeah. And I honestly, like selfishly, giving is feels so much better than receiving. It does. So I like it. Just, I like doing it just because, because yeah. it just feels good for me. It feels so good, and it, yeah. it's just to make somebody's day. And so I'm, I'm hoping that I can continue that giving journey. How do you decide the, the random ones? Because like, if everyone's asking for different things, then those different things cost different dollar amounts. Like, how do you, if you were to use a random number generator and then yeah. pick the comment, you don't know how much money that thing's going to cost. How do you decide? I, I just, I just scroll through and I, I see people, and the, sometimes they'll give me little stories, um, background. I'll look at their profile. I oh, sure. just sometimes I recognize them like I, I know that they've been a longtime follower I can see in DMs like maybe they've been sending me DMs for you know over a year sure yeah so just yeah. pick and choose I don't know there's what's, no rhyme or reason I guess Santa's helper so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's the next giveaway thing you're gonna be are you gonna, gonna keep do, this teacher giveaway yep, thing I'm gonna do the teacher giveaway um I a lot of times and I'm gonna start doing it again I already have a stack of them in in my craft room but I do caribou gift cards Oh, sure. um, little ten dollar gift cards, and I'll leave yeah. like little notes, and I'll I'll put them in just in random places, and people find them, and it's really fun because I'll I'll put my social media handles, so the one what happens is people find the gift card, and sometimes they'll post about it, yeah. and my followers get really excited because I put this all on my stories, and then they can see like where I left the 
the card. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they see somebody posting that they found the card. Sure. And it's like this whole story that yeah. people kind of get excited to follow. Yeah. So I'm going to do that again. Um, I have lots of ideas for just different giveaways that I can do, you know, at the end of summer when the teacher one is done. Like, um, how cool would it be to help some college kids get their dorm room set up? Yeah, with some sure. of the things that they need. You know, I mean, they need everything from like those little, what are those hot plate things to make macaroni and cheese? You know yeah, what I'm talking about? Sure. Or like an air fryer and like the sheets and all that kind of stuff. So that I want to, of course, do my holiday giveaways again because yeah. that just brought me so much joy. And the things that people ask for, it's just, it's so fun. You how know? can somebody contribute if they wanted to contribute to help out with that? I mean, I would say you can email me at sure. emily at smalltownme.com. I'm yeah. super easy to find. Cool. I'm just there. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like it, it would be cool if you had it set up on like your website. You got to have a, a website, right? I do have a website. Which is smalltownme.com? Yes, Okay, correct. cool. I feel like it would be really cool to have like a, a donation link on there where all the money that goes in that yeah. people donate strictly goes to that. And or if a, you did a Patreon or something. That's a great idea. You know what I mean? Yeah, where yeah. Where then any, all the money goes to that. If there's like an access or whatever, then it goes directly to a different school district. or like Because yeah. I think a lot of people would want to hop on and help out if yeah. you gave them an option to a lot of people just don't really know how they don't know, you know what how. I mean? they want to help they just yeah. don't know how to do it and the teacher wish this thing i mean that I, I did so many years volunteering at my kids school i saw the blood sweat and tears that those teachers put into those classrooms yeah and i saw how much they purchased out of their own pocket like, all of just it. to make the, their classroom the don't give these like my mom is a school teacher yeah. so, oh, like, so you get it yeah they don't give them the money for that like yeah. I've, I've heard people gripe about like oh they want you to bring in the kleenex boxes for your kids it's like dude because the teachers don't they're not yeah. Yeah. They don't get money for to buy that stuff. Yeah, it comes and out of their pocket. There's kids that show up, you know, and they don't have any of the a supplies of on the don't. supply yeah, list. Yeah, yeah. And so the teacher is responsible for the markers and the pens and the pencils and yeah. all of the things. Yeah. Um, Teachers are like the one of the most that and I think caregivers are some of the, the most underpaid jobs that yeah. like we need so badly. And part of the problem is like, if you don't pay those people well enough, they go into it with the best, most healthy mindset of wanting to help, but you can only beat somebody down so long. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where people eventually get bitter and they don't do as much as they want to because yeah. they just don't feel appreciated. So teacher appreciation days, please do stuff, <laughs> even if it's easy. You know what I mean? Like I with the supply list, I usually just give an extra $20 bill and it's funny how many yeah. times my kids' teachers will be like, I don't need that. I'm like, well, no, you definitely do. Like, yeah. I'm not saying you need to, you know, buy yourself coffee, but if you want to, you can. Yeah. But like here, because you're you're going to be running out of things and you'll have to pay for it and you shouldn't have to. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if every, even if just every parent gave a $20 bill, it would go so far. With it would people. go very far. And I mean, I used to do little things like... Um, bring in like a bouquet of coffee gift cards and mm. put it in the teacher's lounge. Just little things like that. Yeah. And it's amazing how it just boosts, boosts their spirit and all of a sudden they have all this energy and they're yeah. happy and, and not that they weren't happy before, but you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, so let's talk about TV because I would love to be on TV. Maybe you can help me get on TV. I was in one music video one time. <gasps> That's amazing. Yeah, I know. I got hit up. Um, and all I did was make out with this girl in a hot tub. Oh. <laughs> that was it. I didn't even say anything. <laughs> well, at least you were in there. I mean, yeah, I got to be in a music video. But I want to do voice acting. I think that would be cool. Because oh, I get would to be do cool. um Oh, check this out. This is the dumbest little thing that I have. This is a real award. It is? Yeah. Look at that. Number yep. one. Most luscious radio voice. That's right. That's me. You're on your way. You're on your way for, yeah, for so voice to, acting, voiceovers. I, I get to do uh, radio ads and stuff, but I would love to do some kind of voice acting, like a cartoon or something. You want to do a TV so show. Cool? If it could be with any network, what would the TV show of your dreams Ugh. look like? I mean, I, I my brain goes to, um, didn't Rosie O'Donnell even have a show once? But like Martha Stewart, but she, she had like the show and she'd have guests on and she'd like make things and... I would love yeah. to just be able to have just some sort of a segment where I can just craft with you and help sure. you and inspire you and teach you all of the things. And I don't even think I know a lot of things, but people are always like, that's such a great idea. I'm like, sure. I have more. Let me yeah. show Let me show you some more. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think it's bad to piggyback off other people's ideas anyways. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I understand the, like, 
just copying people's trends is really dumb. I totally agree that that can be really unoriginal and boring. But if you're not exclusively looking at people that do things similar to you, you can see what other people are doing and then do it in your way. And yeah. it's still original and still super cool. And that's all about just learning how to think with an open mind, you know, yeah. think outside the box. So like I tell people when you go to a garage sale, don't have something specific in mind. See right. what speaks to you. And I yeah. really, really mean that. I don't mean that in a weird way, but you're going to go there and you're going to be like, oh, you know, I really like this shelf, but it's really not my style. Well, make it your style. Grab a can of spray paint, you know, do yeah. something with it. And people just, it's like their brain gets stuck. Yeah. And so sure. I'm, I'm here to unstuck the brain. <laughs> well, and I think furniture in general, like I never buy new furniture because I think almost all new furniture is built horribly. Yeah. So like why even buy it? Because it just breaks right away because it's all press board wood. Like, oh, sure. I like to buy all my furniture from like thrift stores and stuff anyways, yeah. because if you just like fix it, which is usually, I'm not a handy person, but usually you just need to put new paint on it. Yeah, well, you know I, mean? I mean, there's a fine, like, so for me, yeah. I, I will not finish a piece of furniture. That is too much work. Sure. But if you give me some sort of like a knickknack, like I'll get like some weird cat that was maybe painted back in the 80s yeah. and I'll spray paint it black and I'm like, look, at it's a Halloween decoration now. <laughs> so that's about my level sure. of, what's it's the, a fast. What's fast the, movie. what has been your personal favorite thing you found through garage sailing? Oh my gosh. Well, I found a Chanel skirt for 20 bucks. Oh, wow. That was quite the find. Yeah. Um, I have found... I don't even know what it was for. It's like a shadow box and it's gold and ornate. And I didn't even spray paint it or anything. It has weird shelves, but I use it for my sunglasses. Cool. So I was like, that's cool. Um, oh, I found a, it, it's like a, a, a sofa table. Okay. Um, mirrored with drawers. Fits my Cricut perfectly. And the drawers are deep enough for a full roll of vinyl. Sure. From a crafter. That's huge. Yeah. Okay. What's your <laughs> I'm glad you have a craft room because I my my house, which you've now gotten to see, the yeah. table right behind the wall over there is just piled with what seems like trash, but it's things that I need when I'm painting. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I'm in the middle of projects all the time. Yeah. So and the the whole desk there, all the drawers are completely full of paint. So that's where where all that stuff goes. What's been your favorite thing that you've created that you've crafted? Oh my gosh, I don't even know. I mean. I just, I kind of make things and I'm like, that's cool. And then I move on. You sure, know what I mean? So yeah. I feel like I don't have this prize possession where I want to show everybody. I love my scrapbooks Yeah. because you look back at them and you reminisce, mm -hmm. but um, I guess I don't have one project that I'm super proud of. Sure. Yeah. For me with art, it's kind of the same way of like, I spent the time doing it. Yeah. And then once it's done, my brain's like, okay, I enjoyed this and now I have nothing else to get from it because I spent all that time and I'm, I'm yeah. done and I moved on to the next. So I sell most of my art, like the originals, because I don't want it. Yeah. It's like, I already spent too much time with this thing and then yeah. I'm going to be on to the next one anyway. So what's the point? So TV show, now we know what you want to do. What are you going to do? There's a YouTube. It's a it's a thing. I ha Yeah. Okay. So I started, because I don't have a real TV show, I started a fake one. And I will <laughs> say that on my YouTube, I say, you know, welcome to my fake show. Yeah. And um, I, I'm just... Kind of focusing it on crafting okay um and so i do like a couple little cricket t tutorials because the cricket machine is intimidating i mean i remember when i got one um I, it stayed in the box for almost three weeks i was scared sure i'm like this thing is like kind of beefy and i don't do know a how lot to use with it with those and they're like really oh not gosh. that expensive no and there's there's so much fun you can do so much so like i'll garage sale and then i'll pick up like an acrylic situation and then i add vinyl to it and i can personalize it for a gift or for myself but um youtube's just been a lot of fun yeah just kind of share all those kinds of things sure are you trying to how like what do the episodes look like obviously you're doing crafts but are you purposely yeah. trying to make them like five minutes or longer or no. and how often are they coming out what is um, like your plan of it i I am putting them out every Saturday. Oh, okay. Um, they go live every Saturday, and um, it's it they vary. So, like, I did like a advent calendar for Christmas. I did kind of an overview of my Cricut machines. I did oh, I did how I pack up my husky. Yeah. Because that video went viral. I bought yep, this I husky that. situation for scrapbooking. Yeah. Um, and people, and that, those are like toolboxes, but yes. not for specifically tools. They're just like well, storage container. I think it's kinda. specifically for tools, but I I started using it for scrapbooking because my friend had one, so oh, I posted sure. about it and it took off. And I mean, I have people. Like I had one woman in California who was at a scrapbooking event, and she's like, oh, "I'm here, and there's so many people with huskies." And I went up and asked them about their husky, and they're like, "Yeah, we follow." Emily and I'm like, dude, that is the coolest Did you thing get paid ever. By Husky? 
No. You should have. I know. I know because they're sold out. Like people are like, yeah. we can't find them. I gave some of those away at Christmas too. People wanted Huskies. And so oh I gave God. them the whole setup. Yeah. These they're brands, awesome. Yeah. These brands need to need to work with more on that. No. Well, I'm excited to see all the things continue to grow because they've been moving really, really fast. I feel like yeah. even just on Instagram, you've like, since I reached out to you two weeks ago, the numbers have grown. Really? Yeah. And I'm oh, like, that's what? cool. That's Man, I'm blowing it. I got to catch up. I get we'll excited. Get yeah. No, we'll get there. Okay. I told you about this question earlier. So when you do stuff that you're passionate about, such as crafting, you know, to your heart's desire, yeah. you get to have really unique experiences that are meaningful to you. Yeah. Can you share a story of a unique experience? I mean, so this is, this is really cool. And it kind of goes back to my whole small town me name yeah. and my small town me roots. But, um, I got this weird comment on one of my videos and it was a girl named Leanna and she said, oh my gosh, you were my favorite babysitter. Like you used to babysit me when I was a little girl and I loved you because you always brought over crafts. And I <laughs> yeah. was like, oh my gosh. So I immediately DM'd her and um, Leanna Wurzer is a artist in the Twin Cities and she's incredibly gifted, does a lot with murals and um, different pieces. And it turns out she lives a mile behind my house. Oh, wow. And I babysat at her house and I was a little kid, so I had no idea where the house was. Sure. I just would get driven there, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And so I have been walking past her house for four or five years on my walks with my husband and didn't even realize it. Cool. So I've kind of come in contact with her and she's um, made some art pieces for me that I'm hoping to do some fun stuff with, with branding. Yeah. Like um, a chicken with a little Prada hair clip because people love my Prada hair clip. And I have, a, she she painted um, or made my my barn cat with the Prada purse, the, the crossbody. Oh, sure. Just cool things like that. But yeah. I mean, that's somebody that I would have never been reconnected with if it wasn't for my social sure. media. Yeah, well, I mean, I think... The internet has a lot of really horrible things about it, but if you use it the right way, there's like just limitless possibilities with it. It's like yeah. the, the world's most useful tool. And I've gotten yeah. to meet a ton of crazy cool people. I mean, this is exclusively because of the internet, but yeah. like like I recently interviewed Luca Buffel, my favorite painter of all time, the person who inspired yeah. me to start painting. Without the internet, I wouldn't have been able to get in contact with him. Yeah. But I just followed him on Instagram. And then one day I was like, I wonder if he'd respond. So I DM'd him and I was like, hey, I don't have a lot of money, but I would love to buy an original from you at some point. So like, what would a small eight by 10 size like drawing cost? Cause I'll yeah. save up for one. And he hit me back and like pretty quickly, yeah. we talked, I ended up buying a painting from him like kind of right then, yeah. stayed in touch. And then um, he knew I was, li I lived in this part of the country and he's like, hey, I'm gonna be on tour and I'm coming through Minneapolis. What's your phone number? And I was like, you want my phone number? That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So I gave it to him and then I'm getting text messages from my favorite artists and then I got to go hang out with them and interview them in Familia Skate Park in Minneapolis like recently. Amazing. Only because of the internet. Yeah. You know, like yeah. if, if, if you use the internet for the right things, it can take you kind of anywhere and the possibilities really are endless. Like yeah. you're a, a scrapbooker and you're making a living doing it. Not that you need to necessarily because you're a stay-at-home mom anyways, but yeah. like you've been able to build like... People can build a life around whatever thing it is that they care about. If you're passionate if you're about it and you're being authentic to who you are, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's the biggest thing, though, is being authentic to who you are, yep. right? Because if you're trying to be somebody else, nobody really cares. No, I agree. You know what I mean? You got to see through that. Yeah. You got to be willing to be vulnerable and accept that a lot of people aren't going to care or like you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which yeah. is hard. It's hard to go into something knowing that people aren't going to like the genuine you. Yep. But you'll find a lot of people that do like the genuine you. Yeah, you know what you I mean, do. and it's going to open up a ton of doors. I'm so grateful for the followers that I have. Yeah, it's just a really cool community of people. Yeah, well, and, and it's funny how close you get with a lot of these people, yes. even if you never meet them in person. Like if you interact with these people consistently yeah. over a long period of time, I feel like I'm close friends with a lot of these people I've never met. Like yeah. right behind you, there's a painting where the Quick Trip bag oh, is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that is a friend of mine, Koto from Ireland. And like, he was just an Instagram like friend of mine that I liked yeah. his art at some point in time. We followed each other. I don't even know how long ago, yeah. but we've interacted over and over and over again. And now I have like three of his paintings and like, it's, a, I, I think of him as like a friend. Yeah. Like I would love to go Isn't visit. Isn't that so funny? And I like, I, yeah, I've definitely never met him in person, but yeah. it's just how the internet works. Yeah. Well, I'm glad the internet brought us together and thank me you for too. letting me share your story for the first time on a podcast. This was an honor. This was really this cool. This was so fun. Where thank can people go me. again and see you? And, and if they wanted to try to support your vision or your, your whole lifestyle, whether it's just donating for them to donate to something or for you to donate to something else, or if they want to contribute in some other kind of way, because there's a lot of different things people can do, right? Maybe they can make a cool jingle for you if they make. <laughs> 
music. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that you know? be cool? What would be the best best way for them to support you and get in contact? And then what are your your uh, different platforms you're on, and how can they find it? Well, I'm. Um, you can always email me at emily at smalltownme.com. And my website is smalltownme.com. Otherwise, Instagram and Facebook, I'm smalltownme. And on TikTok and YouTube, I'm Emily Careview. Perfect. And Careview is spelt? C-A-R-R-I, V as in Victor, E-A-U. Wonderful. I think using the moniker Small Town Me was genius of you. Small Town Me. Yay. Yeah. Thanks. Don't, and, don't even know how I thought of that one either. Yeah. But having Popped something that's head. super small <laughs> like that, that's easy, that no one's going to misspell, yeah. like that's the move. So good on you for doing that. I wanted to cool. just get the, ha- the handle Passion. Yeah. But the dude who has it isn't using it and wants to sell it for five grand. <gasps> and I was like, oh. well, that's against policy. So I screenshotted yeah. it and I sent it to Instagram, like, take this guy's account down and give me the name. Yeah. And they're not doing anything about it. Oh, yeah. Well, that's why I have my name name on a couple platforms, but it's okay. Yeah. And I actually, I had passion passion underscore pod and I bought passion pod like without the underscore. Yeah. I had to buy it from some dude in India for a couple hundred bucks a few years ago. Yeah. I'm too cheap. I garage sale. Yeah. Well, (laughs) (laughs) being like owning a business for so long, like the branding and everything, I, I, I realized like long term I was planning on doing this. Yeah. It's like I need to be able to get a hold of this so that way it's easier because every time I was telling people like the underscore it was just kind of pain so anyways passion yeah. pot is everywhere you can find me everywhere i'm awesome. even in the youtube space these days working really hard on that so if you just type in passion pot it'll pop, pop up everywhere the website is passionpod.org you can donate to it if you want there's a patreon on there where i put episodes like this will go up early plus i'll put um the radio versions that have the songs that you got to pick as oh, part excellent. of it so they'll be on there um and there's also merchandise and stuff you can buy but the best way to support is just by commenting and sharing stuff on instagram like that's the main platform Agreed. that I like to use. And it's really, really easy to do that. It doesn't cost yeah. you anything. So there's no complaining of like, oh, I don't have any money. I can't buy a t-shirt. Don't buy a t-shirt. Just share something that you thought was cool with somebody. You're yeah. already doing it for Kanye and he doesn't care. <laughs> do it for me because I do care. I yeah. would appreciate it. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Passion Pod. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you soon. <laughs>